there was a family by the name of um, Yang Kao, and I remember being at the cemetery with my grandfather, and he pointed out the grave, and he said that this family was one of the original families that came to Ashland, and I think they were in the meatpacking industry. That was a whole family that we knew nothing about. So with the arrival of these, two, you know, of two major industries, Armco Steel and Ashland Oil, um, the town really experiences a great boom. And uh, as part of that, we see a great growth in its Jewish population, um, usually owning retail stores that cater to, to those who worked at the plants. Just going through and doing the research, I found it interesting how many uh, retail businesses there were. There were probably 20 to 30 different retailers in the Ashland area. Um, you know, at the same time. The great exception to this retail concentration was the Mansbach family who started a scrap business that over the years evolved into a steel and also metal recycling firm. I can remember he had one employee. His business was in a barn, literally. It was an old horse barn down on uh, what they call Front Street, which is very close to the river. And he, he bought that barn and he set up his business inside with his one employee and he'd go out and collect junk materials during the day and bring it in then they'd separate it, sort it, prepare it for resale. Now I was standing on, standing on a stool sorting on a barrel when I was eight years old, as my brother also did. We wanted to buy a house in, uh, in Belfont, and the guy was taking us around to see the houses, and, and he said, I'm really sorry, I can't take you to Belfont. And we said, why? He said, because no Jews are allowed there. Then in later years, they opened it up. Back then, they did discriminate, you know? My father, uh, when he bought this house um, in the early 40s, put in a swimming pool. And he told the contractor to go out to the country club and measure their pool and make his one foot longer. And that's exactly what he did. My grandmother was always concerned about my mom. My mom was an only child. And there were a few kids that uh, were not allowed to play with her because she was Jewish. Or she wasn't allowed in a club because she was Jewish. You know, they did okay even with that. And I don't think, I think my mom would say that she had a pretty normal upbringing. Here was a young lady that when she was a kid she couldn't go in the she couldn't go in the uh, country club but at the time of her death her after burial party was at that country club. I thought that was sort of ironic. They had a hard time of it and I am qualified by conversation but not witnessed. Again I came here in the 50s and things were pretty well smooth by then. Both of my parents, my mom and my dad, even my dad is an outsider from Cincinnati, got involved very early um, in civic activities. You know, as adults, young adults, living in Ashland with a young family, uh, there was very little of that that existed in the 60s. And I really think even before that, it was, it was just really pockets, there were just pockets of maybe some discrimination. Clyde was an attorney, and uh, Clyde was an interesting character in that he lived in a railroad car out in South Ashland. He, he had uh, converted it to a residence. So I knew Clyde, yes, and Bertie, his wife. Bertie was not Jewish. David Ehrenberg's wife was Jewish. I found it interesting that David was in World War I. He was a native of England who came to this country and he was sent back there during the war as a member of a military balloon company. Then he came back here after the war and went in the clothing business. He and my grandfather started the, their business together. Um, which was Stars Men's and Boys Shop. Eventually, Ben left the business, and my grandfather saw carried on the men's store, and 
over time it grew into a family store. My parents were in the business with him. When the store was at its peak, I think there were 75 or 80 employees. It was, it was a very large employer in downtown. It's, you know, almost occupied a full city block for Ashland, which <laughs> is not a big block or half a city block. It was the preeminent downtown apparel department store. There was a real sense of, you know, moving along and creating a snowball rolling and creating something that was better and better and revenues were better and the business climate was good and the, the town was doing very well and a real sense of pride in that as a child. At one point we employed 500 people there. So we were remained, we were a big employer here in Ashland. Of course he was very successful in the scrap business and in 1957 my grandmother and grandfather started the Mansback Foundation specifically to pay back the community for his success. The Mansback Foundation uh, existed from 1957 to 2012 so um, and it really did help uh, support a lot of the nonprofits in Ashland. My grandfather was always invested in the market. He liked investing, it was a hobby for him. He felt that the Ashland community had been so good to him and to his business that as he got older, he's probably in his 70s, he decided that he wanted to start giving back. So he took all of the um, really appreciated stocks, equities that he had in his investments, and he set up a foundation. There was vi very viable blue collar biz you know, operations in town. Ashland Oil Refining Company and Armco Steel Corporation. Both of those entities, Armco Steel was sold and Ashland Oil and Refining also was either sold or contracted and diminished numbers of people working in town. The executive offices were pulled out of Ashland as were executive, executives of Armco. When that happened, all that really remained here was a, a, was a couple of refineries and a couple of steel mills that were also contracting. The store really served um, people in, by Ashland standards, in a middle to upper socioeconomic range. It wasn't, you know, like going to Bergdorf's, but it wasn't like going, to, you know, to J.C. Penney. So it was targeted middle to upper income families, and there became fewer of those. There was also much more competition. So you had these malls that were going in, like mini malls. You would get other um, retailers that were coming in in a mall-like environment that was a direct competition to downtown. So you still, it was still a destination, and there are many people that had the fondest memories of shopping in the business over the years, but I think that this transition um, of the principal businesses caused a decline. It was like a true, vital, busy downtown, and that's why when I come back to Ashland and I look at the downtown, it's just so amazing to see how it's changed. The buildings, a lot of the same buildings are still here, but it's such a different place.